What are you doing, Josh? Chris, I'm answering the old question. Who would win in a fight? Megatron? Or Obi-Wan Kenobi? I'd go with Obi-Wan. But that is the Phantom Menace figure. So Jar Jar would probably find a way to screw it up for him. You can't talk about JJ that way. JJ? You guys drinking buddies now? Hey, he's loyal, he's courageous, hard to line. I'm pretty sure you just called him courageous twice. Because he is. Fact. He's a buffoon. He was cooked up just to sell toys to little kids, and to be honest, he's nothing but a big sack of racial stereotypes. Kind of offensive. You take that back. No. I am serious. You take that back. Um, I will do no such thing, sir. I hate you! How woo! <laughs> keep going, keep going! Me so fucked up! We've expressed our feelings and our opinions about a uh, company by the name of Square Enix and their work with the legendary Final Fantasy series. Um, they just released the trailer for Final Fantasy XV and we've seen it, which you guys probably have too because who really gets on the internet and sees Final Fantasy trailer and doesn't at least peek at it the ninth time they've You're seen that. If you were remotely a gamer, yeah. you'd be like... Wonder. They give you a warning before saying this is just some gameplay. The game's not even done. Yeah, it's like a work in progress. Yeah, um, but from what I saw, it looks interesting. Uh, brand new fighting style. It looks kind of a hack and slash. Yeah, it looks like Dynasty Warriors almost. Yeah, it does look a lot like Dynasty Warriors. I mean, it's coming out for PS4 and Xbox One. Yeah. And the graphics look freaking amazing. Yeah. Still not exactly quite at lifelike yet, like they wish they were, but mm -hmm. they're, they're they're pretty close. Mm -hmm. Yeah. My only thing was it looked very, the, the gameplay at least, looked very MMO RPG-ish. Mm -hmm. It looked like they took the engine from Final Fantasy XIV and kind of put a new skin on it and turned it into like an offline RPG. Mm -hmm. But that's not a bad thing because they kind of did the same thing with Final Fantasy XII and I, I, I enjoyed that one. Yeah. Part of the trailer which shows multiple people, mm -hmm. like as a team. Um, so I'm wondering if it will be multiplayer. That would, I mean, if it was like local multiplayer, that would be pretty right. cool instead of doing online. Because everything has to be freaking online these days, and I hate yeah. that shit. Yeah. But if it was local, I mean, if, Set up the hey, let's, let's, have a, let's have a little uh, Final Fantasy XV party, and let's, uh, let's kill some things. I'm interested also to see how much of the 60 hours you put in is video and cutscenes. Well, that's, that's the big thing with Square Enix and Konami, especially with the, uh, Metal Gear Solid games. Yeah. It's like how much are you going to be playing and how much are you going to be watching, right. which has always been kind of, I, was, I guess everyone's been playing about 13. Yeah, which I don't mind. It's very pretty and you guys do a great job doing it, but I, uh, sometimes I, you guys get a set up to where you got to watch a 10 minute cutscene, then fight a boss, you get killed by the boss, you have to watch that cutscene again before you get your chance, you know. And, and, and by not putting a skip option in there? Yeah. You, yeah, that sucks. Right. I bought a video game so I could play it, not watch it play out. Yeah. Which is kind of, I guess, what. Well, movies, movie, Blu-ray movies don't cost sixty bucks. You know? No, they don't. Yeah. So and, that's what you pay And it's over in an hour and a half. Yeah. yeah. So <laughs> if you're lucky. Yeah. So it's like I paid sixty dollars to interact with this thing and not sit there and watch. If I want to watch something, I'll put one of my Blu-rays on. Right. I want to play something. I want it to last for eighty hours, and I want it to keep my attention and make me want to keep playing. And I mean, yes, cutscenes are awesome and all, but yeah, you guys went a little too far last time. Yeah. You guys have already made great games, so you've set your bar, and you can't slack off now. 
and Bravely Default is amazing. And if you can take a cue from that, I think you're on the right track. Yeah. And that has cutscenes, but it's in-game cutscenes and not yeah. the whole thing stops so you can watch something. Right. You know, it's 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 pretty rad. And it's a good fighting system. Stick with it. It's going to be two in a row, three in a row, that I really didn't like. Um, so, if I play this one and don't like it, I am... I'm through with you guys. Yeah. And it's... You're, yeah, and I'm sure you're thing. upset over it, but... Like, oh, one guy, but you know what? <laughs> we're not alone in this. No, we're not. So, it looks cool. Then again, the other ones look cool. Yeah. In execution, not so much. Right. Because so. every game you play now looks cool. Yeah. So, you got to get past the look cool, and you get... You know, I want to... What's the Final Fantasy feel? Yeah. My only thing about that trailer is they showed more cutscene mm -hmm. than gameplay, which makes me think it is going to be more video than, yeah. than gameplay, which is kind of a bummer. Like which said, I hope it's not true. And like you said earlier, bromance going on. Yeah, there's just that was just what was weird about it. it was like there look at, there wasn't there wasn't any female characters from what I could tell, and it was just a bunch of guys driving around in a car going like, "Hey man, I don't know what's going on, but." You know, let's go kill some stuff and just and hang and stuff, <laughs> bro. Yeah. Yeah. Sword. <laughs> oh look, yeah, gun. Metaphor for your penis. <laughs> Final Fantasy. Yeah. All oh, the Japanese and their subtle subtlety. Yeah. Let's go kill some stuff and hang. <laughs> subtle subtlety is subtle. <laughs> it's food. everybody, this is Erica Sabo. I am a Toronto-based gaming and anime YouTuber. Now on the topic of anime, having been a long time fan of anime since I was a child and then transitioning into new anime, it is definitely a very tricky uh, obstacle. It's not easy and there were actually a few years in my life, I believe it was four years, where I had no idea how to transition from old to new. However, there are some anime that do offer some great gateways and are actually very promising and do prove that it's not just old school anime that are the true anime. There are a ton of really amazing ones out there nowadays that you should check out. Uh, the first one I will start with and I will give you a list and reasons as to why you should check these out. Um, but the first one I'm going to start with is an anime called Shinsekai Yori. Shinsekai Yori is a deeply philosophical anime set in a dystopian world. It's very much a thinking person's anime, spending the entire series contemplating moral ambiguities and does so in a visually stimulating way. It fell under the radar for many, which is a shame considering what a gem it truly is. Definitely worth the watch. Next up in anime to check out, if you're looking for something, uh, just as dark as Shinsekai Yori would be Shingeki no Kyojin, otherwise known as Attack on Titan. While this very popular anime series might not be for everyone because of its high amounts of grotesque gore, Attack on Titan is another one of those anime that really gets you to think about the moral ambiguities of a corrupt society. Beneath its hyped exterior is a smart anime well worth your time. Now, if you're looking for something that delves much more into romance, yet delves past the typical shoujo genre, one anime I would highly recommend is Our Haraido. For anyone looking for something truly real in the realm of shoujo, Our Haraido couldn't be a better pick for anyone looking for a bit of romance in their story. While seemingly traditional in scope, Our Haraido breaks the genre norms and makes for a very human and involving story. Such a pleasant surprise. Now for something very different from that, if you're looking for something that's more of a light-hearted drama thriller, there is also Eden of the East. When it's done right, the mystery genre can produce some of the most absorbing and unique stories in anime, and Eden of the East does just that. Its engaging characters, impeccable story, and music all make for an anime you need to see for yourself. And last, but certainly not least, if you're looking for something a bit more on the sci-fi side of things, something that is extremely well produced in terms of its use of time travel and its use of witty dialogue, I would highly, highly recommend you go for Steins Gate. Steins Gate has been heralded for its witty dialogue and savvy use of time travel for good reason. The amount of self-awareness this anime offers is impeccable and makes for one of the finest in the past few years. Truly a sci-fi gem. 
So that is a short list of some anime you should definitely check out. There are tons more out there, tons more that you should check out that are being released now through Funimation, Crunchyroll, wherever. Like there are so many. And there are a lot of really great YouTubers out there too who do reviews specifically on these shows. So I would highly recommend checking those out and keep delving further. Be curious about this kind of stuff and just look around. If you don't find what you're looking for, don't give up hope. Never give up hope on that kind of stuff. So good luck and Godspeed. I'm Brian Warren. I am part owner of Nakama Toys with my wife Mary Warren, who is uh, helping at home right now. So uh, we're at 2504 North California Avenue, and we're the awesomest import toy store and only in Chicago. We are open 12 to 8 every day except for Wednesday when we're closed, and today, which we close at 6. So Sundays we close at 6. We tried to say Thursday through Tuesday. 12 to 8, but that gets a little muddled because Wednesday's a weird day to close. Yeah. So, open daily except for Wednesdays. How long did the store been open? Uh, the store's been open about two months. Um, we've done online sales for about two and a half years, and we've been doing conventions in Chicago, and we've done one in Louisville for the past like three years. Okay. So, how did you get into the toy business, let alone import Japanese stuff toys? I've collected toys all of my life. Like when I was a kid, my parents uh, started with He-Man, and then I moved on to like G.I. Joe's and Transformers, things like that, like kind of as I grew up. I stopped a little bit in high school, but then I got back into it in college, and then, um, and then I got into anime when I was like 16, 17, and kept on watching that, didn't really collect the toys. Then like I started seeing the toys going to comic stores and just scooping up whatever I could get, and uh, then we went to Tokyo, about six or seven years ago and that just totally got me back into it right. and from there it was mostly like it kind of for me personally it's uh japanese kind of soft vinyl figures like godzilla right. ultraman stuff like that but uh and then me and my wife have like 16 years of retail experience so i was like okay we're gonna do this what's something that chicago doesn't have anymore and we were like an anime toy store because it definitely, the only one was out in Schomburg and he closed down, so. So you had retail experience and mm -hmm. toy collecting experience, why not, right? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I get to shop for toys for a living, that's not half bad. So um, you have a lot of great like stuff, me and Chris were walking around looking. So what is your pride and joy that you have here that you sell and offer? What is like your favorite? Oh, my favorite? Um, that's tough. I love the real action heroes. Yeah. Uh, just because they're so detailed and just crazy awesome. I love the uh, Play Arts Kai, the Metal Gear figures, the Figma, like the Samus. Because I am I was a huge video game fan. I don't have a lot of time for it anymore, but like, played a lot of Smash Brothers, all the old NES, Super NES, stuff like that. So that's what I'm a huge fan of. Capcom stuff, things like that. Do you have any conventions that you're going to be at? that are coming up? Uh, not coming up. We'll, the next one for us will be C2E2. Okay. And then we'll do C2E2, ASIN, Anime Midwest, and G-Fest. And then we're doing one out of town in Louisville nice. again. So, nice. And we're planning on expanding, you know, to the Midwest until we're coast to coast right. eventually through the year, but that'll be further down the line. Right. Felicia Day, the first year we did C2E2, was walking by our booth and she saw some of our Godzilla stuff and she was like, okay, everything you have Godzilla, I want. It was awesome. <laughs> like, it was super awesome. Yeah. You know, and More reasons to love Felicia Day. Yeah, exactly. I don't get too starstruck. Right. I'm like, okay, you're just a normal person just like right. everybody else. So She's got a cool job. <laughs> yeah. yeah, exactly. You get a cool job. You get to act. I mean, that's pretty awesome. Yeah. So, uh, but I mean, most of the time for cons, it's just, you know, getting to interact with everybody and hang out three days of costumes and fun and pretty awesome. Yeah. And I mean, Midwest was cool. Things. This was our first year uh, doing it and they were really nice and you know it's it's smaller so it's hard to go from like C2E2 and ASIN where it's you know 20,000 people plus over a weekend to right. like 10,000. Like cut it in half and also cut the con like floor in half so yeah. but that's okay. It's, it's 
you gotta have the more intimate ones, and then you gotta have to have the bigger ones. Right. And then G Fest is just like, like they basically take over like a wing of a hotel. Yeah. And that's like it's like two stories, I think. And then the but the vendors room is always one of the big attractions. Right. The fun part is when everyone gets into it. Mm -hmm. it's like oh yeah, for sure. Renaissance Fair, it's just it's cool with everything, but it's really cool that everyone just gets into it. Yeah. So, yeah, I was not prepared for that. No. <laughs> Asin's definitely the big one where they get super into character. Yeah. And are you and your wife both from Chicago? Or? We are, we're from, uh, I'm from Kentucky and she's from Indiana, okay. but we call Chicago home. Nice. I mean, if people ask us where we're from anymore, we say Chicago. Right. We love the city, we love Logan Square. And you're, they're right off the highway, so which makes Right between. Game. Right, just get off of California. Yep. yep. In a couple of weeks, once they're done with construction. Winter and then construction. <laughs> Chris, let me in. No. <laughs> Seriously, stop, man. You're making me laugh out here. Yes, I need to go to the hospital, okie day. Come on, Chris. No. I'm trying to be serious. No. I never lie. What part of no do you not fucking understand? Hey, now. <laughs>